So we are going to talk about WordPress plugins, which is always very exciting. Um, so the first thing is just what is a plugin? So a plugin is a little piece of software that you, uh, that you can use to extend the functionality of WordPress. So with WordPress, you've got your core software, which is your WordPress, and then you can use plugins to do stuff, to make your site do stuff, to help you do stuff with your site. Plugins are just little add-ons. Um, they, they literally plug into the WordPress core, and then they also interact with each other. So here are just four general categories. You've got front-end features. Those are the things that your users will see. Those are the things like photo and video galleries, FAQs, forms, sliders, all the stuff that's on the front end. Plugins can do that. Very popular use for plugins. Socials and sharing, uh, this, these are the ones where you can display Facebook posts on your website, you can show your, your Twitter stream or your Instagram feed. Um, these are also the little things like if you, go to a, if you go to a WordPress site and at the bottom of the page or something you might see all the little icons so that you can share that content out to your own social media accounts. A plugin is doing that. Over on the right-hand side, we have some of the geekier uses for plugins. Uh, Backend boosters, these are things like backup plugins, which you should have. If you attended um, Steve's, Steve Mortaboy's uh, workshop this morning, he was talking a lot about being sure that you back up your site regularly. Your host may or may not be doing it, so having a backup plugin is always a good idea. SEO, uh, there are lots of popular plugins for that. Security, tutorials, developer tools, all other uses for plugins. And then there are the power packs. And these are things like a store, you know, WooCommerce, um, on site social networking, buddy, is stuff like BuddyPress, forums, membership sites, event management, all of that. So plugins can be very simple. They could just show a slider on your website, or they can be really, really powerful. So lots of, different, uh, lots of different uses for plugins. These are some of the popular ones that you may have heard of. These are, um, these are just some of the big names. And I will say big names are good. If you've heard of a plugin, that's, that's a good starting point because things tend to be popular for a reason. And I'll post all of these slides. These are plugins that we use uh, at our shop. There, uh, there are others that we use as well, and I hope that we'll get to have a conversation after, I've, after I finish here during the question and answer, and we can talk some about you know, what your specific needs are and maybe others that, that you like to use. Um, so these are eight plugins. Most of them are free. I think Gravity you have to pay for, and there are pro versions of all of these. So plugins live in this thing called the, the WordPress plugin repository, and that's where all of these free plugins exist. It's when you go to your, when you go looking for a plugin, you're going to go look in the WordPress plugin repository. And it's been around for, I think, 11 years. So does anyone know how many plugins you have to choose from? We're talking free plugins here. Anybody know what that number is? Or you want to guess? 6,000. 30,000. 30, 30, Anybody else? All right. 46,734 plugins in the WordPress repository as of a couple of days ago. Now, these are actually all for real. You know, WordPress, they have a set of rules and a set of tools that you have to use. And if you create them and you abide by all the rules, you got 46,734 to choose from. That's a pretty big candy store. So how do you choose? OK, so that's what, what we're going to talk about today. Um, and who cares? Can't you just pick the top one on the list and have it work fine? What are the hazards? OK, so well, there are hazards having to do with performance, and there are hazards having to do with security. You know, some of them can be a little sketchy. Uh, but they can also do other things, too. Does anybody know what this is? You may recognize it as this. This is you, by the way. <laughs> so this is known as the white screen of death. It's actually not super scary. You can Google, how do I fix my white screen of death? And you will actually see that the very first thing it tells you to do is start deactivating your plugins and figure out which one is causing it. 
Um, but it's a terrible thing to get, and you know it's so so, and it's usually caused by a bad plugin. So choosing a proper plugin is kind of a big deal. You want to be sure that you that you do this thing properly, um, so that we can avoid the white screen of death. For this presentation, I'm going to presume that you are adding plugins from your WordPress dashboard. Uh, and this means that you go into your back end in your WordPress dashboard, and you click on plugins, and you click on add new. Is everybody with me so far? Are you familiar with this process in your WordPress website? OK. Um, and also for this presentation, I'm just going to, I just searched on testimonials because that's like a common thing that you can get a WordPress plugin to do. And you should, PS, put testimonials on your website. Super important. Um, so, so that's how we're going to approach this. Everything will be done within the dashboard. These are the things we're going to look at. The top three I would call the biggies. Compatibility, updates, and support. We're also going to talk about less important, but let's still consider them, installs, authorship, and reviews with an asterisk, and we'll talk about why I put the asterisk there. So the very first thing is compatibility with your version of WordPress, which, PS, should be the most recent version because you're updating your core regularly, right? Keep it security, keep all of that good stuff going. Um, so yeah, so you want to be sure that whatever plugins you choose are compatible with the version of WordPress that you're running. So how do you know? All right, so we're choosing our, our WordPress plugin here. We've chosen testimonials. And there's a little line there at the bottom. The one on the left says, untested with your version of WordPress. Now, you don't have to tell it what version of WordPress you have. Its brain will know. Um, the one on the right says, compatible with your version of WordPress. All right, so now we're already starting to winnow down. We know that compatibility is very important. You, you can. Um, it's a little trickier. The newest version of WordPress doesn't make that as intuitive. So, but generally, you can just keep scanning down that page and look for the little check marks. So, um, the next thing is how, how recently was it updated? Nobody likes old candy. So, uh, recently updated is going to be a big deal. And you find that just above the compatibility line. The one on the left was last updated one year ago. Boo. The one on the right was last updated one week ago. Hooray. So this means that, um, that they're actually paying attention to this plugin. Um, WordPress versions are coming out pretty quickly lately. You may have noticed they're rolling out new ones pretty frequently. So you want to be sure that the plugins that you're using are compatible and that they're staying on top of it and updating it. And then the last thing is support. Um, well supported by the author or the authors. So this is a little trickier to find out, but it's going to get us into another cool place. So first thing you want to do is you, find, you want to find out more details. This screen in your, in your dashboard is only going to give you so much information. So we want to find more details. There it is. Under every, under, in each one of these screens will be a little blue link that says more details. Click that. So that will take you to the plugins page in the WordPress.org repository. This is kind of like a wiki page. It will take you to the page that has all of the information and all of the details on that plugin. So I just show this to you so that you can see, and you can see up in the URL, WordPress.org backslash plugins backslash easy testimonials. That's where we are in the internet world. But we're going to zoom in and just look at the actual information that it gives you. And for the purposes of today, we're going to really care not so much about the stuff on the left, but all the stuff in this red box. So far, so good? All right. So we're looking for support. We want to know how well is this thing supported. Down there at the bottom is a little section called support. This one tells us 18 of 28 support requests have been um, resolved in the last couple of months. It shows you that there is a support forum, which is good. So this is a good place to start. There's also a little tab up at the top that also says support. You can also get to it that way. So what are you looking for? 
If you go to the support forum, you care about the response and the resolution time. In this case, in the WordPress.org support forum, you can see that there are four support requests here. And three of the four are resolved. That's pretty great. So you want, you want to, this is what you want to see. You want to see that an actual person is there to help you. If you need help installing your plugin, if you need help configuring your plugin, if you need to know if it does a certain feature, support is going to matter a lot. So as enticing as a plugin may be, as wonderful as it may look, and no matter how much cool stuff it does, if you can't get to a human pretty quickly who can help you when you need it, then I'd drop it off the list. You think about the value of your time and your stress level and look for one that has support. Bonus points. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the 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 for yes the the forums are run by the plugin authors. This is a little different than like the standard WordPress.org support forums, which are everybody. Um, the but the usually what you'll see is the plugin author will mark it as resolved, and then the person has to kind of say yes, I agree with you, it's resolved. So when you see it's resolved, it's for real resolved. It's not just I'm done and go away. Yeah. Yeah, occasionally you'll find that, and they will. You'll, there will usually be a little thing on there that will say this plugin hasn't been supported in you know a period of time or that kind of thing. This I, I will tell you that this forum is kind of the wild west. It's not official. It's not moderated. It's really just kind of a service. So if you really, really want support. I would use a plugin that has its own support forum, that is well documented, that maybe has a ticketing system. The, that's how you're going to really know that you're getting the best support. Because you're right. I mean, in the, in the WordPress.org repository forums, it's very possible that they're just kicking the can down the road. And you may not get the best support there. Sure, absolutely. So I'm not saying, and I, will, and I will say that none of these things are be-all, end-alls. I'm just trying to give you some way to get through that 37,000 and winnow down. It's an awful lot, yeah. But support will matter. And, and I mean, and you're absolutely right. You should never, if, you, if everything else is wonderful about it, but the one guy who supports it isn't supporting it anymore, that's just something to weigh. Absolutely. So, so gravity on the left, on the, yeah. Um, so, so gravity is a paid plugin for forms. It's extremely powerful. Um, they have priority support. You can submit a ticket. All of that stuff. It's it's one of those that's worth paying for because it's complicated. So you want to be sure that you have good support for it. WooCommerce, same kind of thing. WooCommerce, the basic WooCommerce is free. You're going to pay for the extensions, but it's really helpful to have documentation. So even if you're, if, if like the person isn't necessarily supporting it, at least be sure that there are some really well-written instructions somewhere that will help you. Any resource you can have that will provide help and assistance when you need it, is great because otherwise you're kind of left on your own. Um, Events Manager Pro, again, Events Manager is free. The Pro version is paid, but it's worth paying that whatever it is so that you can submit a ticket and actually have somebody pay attention to it. So the reason I emphasize support is because you may find yourself having everything working properly, you followed all the instructions, but it's something still not working. And having support, having someone there to communicate with um, is always a good thing. And if it's the author, fantastic. Because they can usually say, yeah, you know, uh, it doesn't play well with this other plugin or something like that.
Yes, sir. Does WordPress screen some of these buttons beforehand so that that reduces that number down? It does. So that's the screened number. That, that, you know, the, you, you have to, uh, WordPress will not allow a plugin into the repository unless it has passed all of these initial filters. There are a lot, a lot of people. The WordPress community, as we know, has gotten extremely large. So that's why there are so many, and that's why we're here trying to figure out how to, how to winnow them down. Well, I think it goes even further. I think there's a certain select number of very popular plugins, both paid and free, that WordPress will actually test the ver them on versions that are upcoming. It will not release a new version unless the top 100 plugins work or something. That's correct. And I, but I don't know if they ever tell you which of those plugins qualify for that kind of select status. Yeah, we would like to know that. that would be super, Wouldn't that, that would be, be great? great I know. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of that, you know, a lot of that compatibility line is important, the last updated. So we are, we're having to do a little treasure hunting. I mean, it is, you know, and, and, and honestly, um, Google 10 best plugins. I mean, there are a lot of, you know, use the resources that you can find on the internet. Talk to your colleagues. See what other people are using. Um, there are, even if you see a website that has plugins that you like, you can, there are lots of tools that will help you see what plugins are installed. So a lot of it really is uh, in the spirit of the WordPress open source community, which is talk to your friends, you know, um, see what they're using and what kinds of experiences they've had. Uh-huh. And you bought support. Uh-huh. How do you reassign support to that plugin if it's that popular? How do you reassign support? So you mean at the at the author level? Uh -huh. How did, how did, that's kind of on them. You know, I mean they can choose to stop supporting it and sometimes you'll get an email. You don't. You don't. You know, sometimes it depends. Um, the ones that are, and one of the reasons why we only use plugins that are well known, you know, that have a for real company behind them, that are, uh, you know, are regularly taken care of is because of the issue you're talking about. Now sometimes I'll get an email from a plugin author that I bought a plugin from five years ago and they'll go, you know what, I'm hiking in the Andes now and I'm out of, I don't, I'm not in business anymore. Just wanted you to know. So now I don't have the expectation that they're going to help me, but that's on, that's, they have the right to do that. There's no obligation. So, so that's why we try to sort of stick with the ones that are, um, that are backed by companies, uh, and then, you know, and some of them become deprecated. I mean, things that have to do with, if I'm making this up, but if there was a plug-in having to do with cassette tapes, mm -hmm. then nobody's going to use it anymore, and they're going to drop that out. You know, it, it will become less popular over time. So, yeah, that's, that's the WordPress world we're in, you know. Yes, sir. A real-life scenario to that is actually Michael Corbett and all of them SEO. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you know, and that'll happen too. A lot of times, yeah, and right. You can, you can just fork it, and we're, and it's, we don't, and I want to keep this beginnery, but, um, but, but yeah, there are lots of, there are lots of plan B's and C's and that kind of thing, and we'll talk about this a little bit when we get to authorship. 
So, um, so getting down to this orange row, one of the things you want to look for is lots of active installs. Now, I don't mean to denigrate br brand new plugins or anything like that, but if you're, if you're having to winnow down and you're having to sort through that candy store, lots of active installs helps. And there's a, there's a number right up there at the top, like this one has 30,000 plus active installs. That's really good. You want to know that there are a lot of people out there using it um, and that it's in, uh, and, and that is active installs, by the way. Its brain doesn't count the ones that are on websites but inactive. It's only counting the ones that are active, which is pretty, pretty cool. Legitimate authors. Okay, so let me show you where this is. And again, this is one of those things that y y I'm starting to winnow down, going down the funnel here. Like you've got four plugins and you can't decide. So now you're going, they win on all these other things. Now just let's keep going down. So the authorship is down here. You can click on the author's link. You can get a page on them. You can find out what company they work for. There's a lot of information there that will let you know if this person seems for real. If it's Captain McSketchy and he's only done one plugin ever, then, you know, that, drop it out. If it's a company that you're familiar with and it's somebody who seems to be doing this for a living, then that's a really good thing. May not say whether they're alive or not, but, it would, but you will also be able to see if it's updated recently, they were at least alive a week ago, so, <laughs> so you're, you're probably yeah, in good shape. I mean, realistically, I mean, I hate to be ageist, but, but old people generally don't like plugins. I'm an old person, so careful. No, no, go ahead. You're not an old person. I mean, <laughs> someone who's 80 is probably not going to be writing a plugin. Yeah. So in terms of deaths and so on, I mean, you, you don't have to worry about that too much for the next two decades. Yeah, you maybe know, and it's always... Years, maybe 40 years from now you might have to worry about it, but by then you probably will have switched plugins. Yeah, and whatever the reason, you just want to be sure that somebody's taking care of it. Well, another thing, if, if you guys are all new to the WordPress community, I mean, this WordPress community, it's, it's pretty tight. Like, it is. It does, and that's pretty cool. That's why that's why I love WordPress. You know, it's it's very friendly, um, and everybody kind of just wants to help, or it should be that way. So, so the next thing is good reviews. Asterisk. They make the review section really shiny and bright and pretty and enticing. This is a 30,000 plus plugins, uh, or 30,000 30, plus active installs. You'll see there are 31 five star reviews, there's seven one star reviews. That's not many people leaving reviews, for one thing. We should all be good stewards of the plugin community and leave reviews, but we don't. How many of those 31 were this guy's family? <laughs> How many of those seven were his competitors? So just like with everything, take reviews with a grain of salt. Don't let it be kind of your, your thing. They put it, I mean, they, they put it front and center, but I think that's really just, this is just a theory, but I think that's WordPress trying to get us to review plugins because they want us to do that. It just hasn't really caught on. So the reviews thing, keep the asterisk there. All right, so. Compatibility update support, super big important. Installs, authorship, reviews, asterisk. Still good screens, not as important. But these are the things I would say to look at if you're trying to choose a WordPress plugin from the gigantic repository. So those are the basic principles of how to get us down to a world where we can at least start to make some good decisions when you search a plugin and you get all of these search results. Um, so now I want to turn it over to you. I'd love to have a conversation about what are the kinds of things that you have run into. Uh, are there any particular plugins you love to use? 
Uh, do you have any questions about plugins we love to use? Well, could, 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 could you give us your list first? Uh, oh, my list. You know, the top 10, 25 Gosh. Um, I love, actually, uh, for SEO, I love all-in-one SEO, and I love Yoast. Sorry, sponsors. But, um, <laughs> but, but I, I do love those. I think they're great. We use, for photos and video galleries, uh, or sliders rather, we use Revolution Slider. There is another one that's a little simpler uh, called Meta Slider. We really like that one. Um, for backups, WP Backup is a good one. Easy testimonials that I pounded to death um, is a really great one for testimonials. YouTube Video Gallery, super easy name. Um, there was actually just a really nice presentation on, on the importance of using video, but that's a good one. Um, Google Analytics, seriously, y'all, it's free. Google Analytics on your website is so important, but it can get overwhelming because the dashboards are just crazy complicated. Um, there's a, there's a, a, a plugin called Monster Insights, which actually used to be run by Yoast, but they carved it off. Uh, Monster Insights is a really good Google Analytics plugin. Um, gra we use Gravity Forms for our Forms plugins. Gravity Forms is, awesome. Gravity Forms is amazing. You do have to pay for it. If you want a free version and you're not going to do a lot of whiz bangery, there's also a Forms plugin called Formidable. And Formidable, or Formidable, um, it's drag and drop. Love it. Really great. What am I forgetting? What, what else do we need to plug in for? Social media. Social media. Um, social media. So there are, you know, for Twitter and stuff like that, Twitter and Facebook, you can actually just go in and grab their embed code and put it in. Um, there's a, a website called Social Sharing. Some of these are very imaginatively named, I know. But um, the social sh it's just called the Social Sharing Plugin. Um, and it's good. Um, add this. Okay, so, so when you have, you see some site in it that has LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter and like 17 others that yeah. you don't recognize. Yeah. Is there one thing where you can just grab all of those? Yeah. Okay, which one's that? Add this. Okay. So add this is a good free plugin. And add this will, um, when, you, when you add and activate add this, it's the thing that lets you put all those icons down at the bottom so people can, can share out. Uh, the free version is perfectly adequate. Um, if you want to pay for the pro version, then you get a little more control over it. But seriously, the free version is fine. It will even make, let you know, like, do I want to put it at the top or do I want to put it at the bottom? You know, it'll give you a lot of cool stuff. Um, so add this is fantastic, and, and share the ability to share your stuff out is not only great for SEO, but it's also just great for humans. You know, it's just so much easier to be able to do that. So to be able to do that with that one little plugin is a pretty big deal. And if you have a, a big audience on Twitter, I'll give a plug to Ben Meredith, who's one of the organizers today. Um, you probably met him; he's running around. But he has a plugin called Better Click to Tweet. And so if you've ever gone to a website. <sighs> And you can click on a sentence, and it'll automatically tweet out from that person's, the reader's account. That's Ben. He created Better Click to Tweet, and it's free in the repository. Very so cool. Check that one out. Yeah. yeah. Um, for events, better the click to Better Click to Tweet, yeah. For events, we like um, the events calendar. It's free. Uh, the events calendar pro is super duper awesome because you can do things like um, do registrations and RSVPs and, you know, but even the free version will do Google Maps and show a really cool calendar. Is different than events manager? It is. It's called the events calendar. 
Is that what I just said? Or did I say something different? Okay. Yes. It can, um, yeah. So if you, there's a pro extension, there's a pro add-on for it that will work like a registration system. It'll essentially work like a little mini Eventbrite. So it will remember that last time, like, will it keep data about, like, this person signed up for this? Yeah. So so a person can create a profile just like you would on Eventbrite, um, and and yeah, it can it can do stuff like that. I know, you know, it's so funny, and uh, it, there's there's always been this big thing. There used to be this rule of thumb, like no more than a dozen plugins on your website, or it's going to crash. I am guilty of writing that article myself a couple of years ago. <laughs> so uh, nowadays, it really has to do with the cleanliness of the code and how well all these things play together. People are um, creating new plugins and updating old plugins that do play more nicely with others. So it's not as big a deal anymore. Okay. You know, I'm seeing sites with 50 plugins that work perfectly, perfectly well. Uh, the, the good ones tend to not be so bloated. They don't call as many external libraries. You know, they're not making the website think as much. So Exactly. You know, and it's interesting because when we when we develop sites for folks, we our whole thing is we don't want you to have to come back to us. This is WordPress. It's a loving community. We're not going to hide your admin panel from you. We're going to give you that we do have a support and maintenance program in case you get hurt yourself. But even so, you have backups, so it's fine. Um, but but what we what we've discovered is that the community at large i think has is understanding that as more and more people use wordpress there is this uh, desire to start adding a lot of plugins so every now and again and usually you'll get the white screen of death so you know you did something wrong but um, I, so I think what's happening is they really are trying to, to create them more holistically so that they understand that this plugin is probably going to go on a website that already has a bunch of other plugins. So the number isn't as uh, important anymore as the, the quality of the plugin itself. That's a great question, though. We get asked that a lot. A-B testing? A-B testing. There are, I, you know, there's, I don't know of a good plugin for A-B testing because, you know, we usually use uh, third-party services and stuff like, like that. But I don't know. I you know do a search on it and apply these screens, and then see what you come up with, and put it in the Slack channel and let us all know. What about something that can tell you, uh, do link che checking, you know, valid link checking within WordPress? There's a there's a there's a there's uh, a great plugin called Broken Link Checker, and especially if you have a very large website and you're you're um, copying and pasting content over from a bunch of other stuff and everything. Broken link checker will scan your website and it will return what the links are. It also gives you a really cool page um, that lets you, uh, you don't have to like go to edit page for every single one of them. It will give, you can fix the links right within this big dashboard. We're using it right now. We're doing a, a website for an international university and we're converting them, what, Alex? We've got like thousands of pages. We don't know. It's, we've, we've, we've had a lot of coffee lately. <laughs> and what it's doing, um, so we're using Broken Link Checker, and we're just putting Donald Duck in or whatever as the links because we know we don't have them yet because then we'll be able to run Broken Link Checker at the end, and it'll give us a big dashboard of all of them. We can just fix them, boom, boom, boom. It's really good. The one thing I will, I will say about Broken Link Checker is when you're not using it, turn it off, deactivate it because it will, it'll churn all the time. Well, th there was another speaker who said, and this is contrary to everything I've heard, he said if you're not going to, you know, like if you're just using it, uh, a plug-in for like development, Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, and it's interesting because um, theoretically, when you deactivate these things, they're supposed to, their brains are supposed to shut down. Not all of them do. Caching plugins. I know Steve was talking about that this morning. Sometimes caching plugins will just—they're just—they're just stubborn. 
You know, they're because, and a lot of times it's because they're running scripts and the scripts will keep running. So if you know you're not going to use it again, delete it. If it's something like Broken Link Checker, we haven't had any problem deactivating it and reactivating it. It's probably on a plug-in by plug-in basis, to be honest. But if it's something little like, you know, an FAQ plug-in and you know you're going to use it, but you just don't want to set it up right now, then just deactivate it and let it sit there until you're ready for it. It shouldn't, it shouldn't bother you. Anybody else? HTML, yeah, HTML validators. I don't know. What do you use for that, Alex? I keep talking. Alex is our director of digital, so. Uh, directly, if you go to validator.wu.org, uh, you can enter the URL of the page. And you yeah, but it'd be better to do it within WordPress, you know, and then and ideally your whole site. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, so um, page builders, um, there's a theme framework called X that has a great plugin inside it called Cornerstone, and it's a really cool page builder. However, if you have another one, Visual Composer is a very popular one. Um, it's so funny, people start to sigh when we talk about page builders. Uh, <laughs> And I do too, because they can really bloat your code, you know, that kind of thing. But if you don't, if you, if you need to have your page look a certain way and you don't have the, the time or money or desire to code it yourself, uh, page builders like Visual Composer can be really good. So. I like Visual Composer. I mean, I we use it on our site, Dirty Little Secret. That's out now. Yeah, uh, because sometimes it's just um, it's just easier, you know, and it can accomplish stuff. Because the and Visual Composer is one of those plugins that they're keeping constantly updated. They take very good care of it. It it went through a kind of a down phase, but now it's back. Um, Divi has a page builder, which is an Elegant Themes um, uh, product. Elegant Themes has a really good page builder, you know, packaged in with their themes. Um, headway, a lot of people use. I honestly don't know much about it, so so I don't know. We're not enormous fans of the drag and drop themes. Um, it, I mean, we could talk forever about you know things like Wix and why you know and, and why they're bad because a lot of these drag and drop themes just um, they just gunk up the internet. You know, I mean, there's just like a lot, a lot of code. There's a there. A lot of things that don't play well with each other. If you update one thing, this thing breaks. So the Visual Composer, we've had pretty good luck with. Yeah, and, the, and it's pretty easy, you know, to figure out and use. And then Google, like, VC add-ons, because that's where you get things like, you know, all the accordions and all the, you know, cool buttons and stuff like that. So they can be good for kind of just quick and dirty, you know, get a project done kinds of things. And they're responsive. Also, if, if you have a bootstrap, yes. in the theme itself, there's a plugin called Bootstrap um, Shortcode. And they allow some flexibility with creating uh, some columns and some layouts. It's not as uh, intricate as Visual Composer, but it gives you the possibility of creating columns and things like that by using shortcodes. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and there are a lot of, you know, because plugins will tend to come with their own short codes, um, but there are a lot of uh, customizations that you can do within them. So, yeah. So, why don't people in the room, if they, if they have a plugin, they're really excited about one of it? Who loves a plugin? Nobody? Okay, you I, don't? Do, I have one. Yay. Um, there's one by a company called Seed Prod, so S E E. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think he did. It used to be ultimate coming soon. Yes. Oh, I love this plugin. I'm so um, glad you said this. And if you're build, if you're just building your site and you're wanting to play around with it, I'll go to the site and see. Well, what to do? Um, but I'm, gonna, I'm telling you, if you're just building your site and you're and you're wanting to play around with it, you really don't want the public to see the design. This plugin puts a cover page over your site so that anyone who's not logged in comes to your site. All they get is a launch page. And you can collect email addresses. You can do social shares. You can put photos, do all kinds of stuff on that page. But when you log into the site, 
you get full access and you can view the site's front end and back end like normal. So it's like a cover page that lets you design and develop live without worrying about the publishing or hitting index. And it, and it is a fantastic, I'm so glad you brought that one up. Um, go to seedprod.com, S-E-E-D-P-R-O-D.com, and um, that's yeah, ultimate that coming soon. Coming soon page and maintenance. Yeah, he just kind of changed. It used to be called yeah, ultimate coming soon. There is a free <laughs> version in the repository that has less features, and then there's the paid version, which is well worth the money if you're going to be designing a lot of sites. It is, yeah. And you can essentially, you can kind of make a landing page website out of that thing. And it's sort of, you know, it's good because, um, you, you can put a little video or you can put, you know, there are countdown timers. There's a lots, of, lots of cool stuff. You can uh, style it to look like your brand and all of that. But it's also good because you start to get your Google juice. You know, you've got your domain name out there. So, um, so you don't have to feel this pressure. I think there's, sometimes there's this crushing pressure that your website has to be totally perfect before you launch it. You're never going to launch it if you succumb to that pressure. Just get something out there. And this, and this plugin is a really good way to at least get a coming soon page out there so that you start to communicate a little bit. Uh, and then while you've got that, in the back end, you're developing your website. So, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we love Treehouse. I mean, it's not a it's not a, a theme or a or a uh, plugin, but um, but Treehouse is really good. Lynda.com is really good. There are a lot of uh, a lot of like a lot of those resources that will that will help you learn CSS. Now, I do think there are some tools. I know there. And again, use use your newfound knowledge to find them. <laughs> Um, but you can, but there are like um, CSS education kinds of plugins that you can uh, that you can find that will then show you like while you're in the back end, it'll like give you little tips and tricks and go, hey, this CSS is doing this thing. Um, honestly, one of the best ways to learn CSS is just get your hands dirty. And um, there is uh, there are extensions for browsers, Firefox. What's it called? Firebug. Yeah, so there's Firebug. There's one for Chrome, Chrome Developer Tools. There are extensions that um, you have your little whatever, and then you click it, and it'll put a window. I'm sorry, I'm out of my, out of my zone. Um, it'll put a little window down there, and then you can right-click and inspect an element, and it will go, it'll show you all the CSS for it. And the cool thing is that then you can play with it live. So you can actually change the CSS down there and preview it in the browser. And if you like what you see, then you can go and actually change it in your code. But oh, that's so much fun to play with. Does anyone use Photoshop to design graphics in here? OK. If you use Photoshop, look at CSS Pack. Oh, yeah. Um, because it's a, it's a Photoshop plugin. So if we want a button that looks a certain way, you can design the button in Photoshop. And then CSS Hat will give you the CSS. <laughs> Plug your website to get that look in your website. See why we love doing this? I know. I know. And if you go to um, mightydeals.com, they have a deal on CSS Hat right now for $19. This is the best day ever. Mighty Deals. Yeah, it's pretty great. Yes? Um, and I know on um, WordPress you can use a uh, contributor, but if you're going to have a lot of people write on your site, is there a plugin you should be using? I don't know. Uh, do you know like a, like a, like a user role? Is this, is this like you want, okay, let's use case. Um, well, if using submit a lot. story about your yeah, fill in the blank. Okay. Editorial approval. Yeah. To them. But, but that's if you got like a serious. Plug. Yeah, I would just you know look, um, do a search on like uh, like uh, workflow, 
you know, or, or that kind of thing. The contributor, the contributor role is good, but you just, you know, then you have to deal with, that's part of a process right. thing too, you know, right? Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah. I've got two suggestions. Um, so user role editor, which I think is free in the repository. Yeah. I've used that um, on our directory website where we want the directory members who pay for a listing to be able to have certain permissions. It breaks out the, word, the WordPress permissions into tiny little pieces and you can check boxes, create a new role, and check boxes to say exactly what you want them to do. Okay. So like we let them submit um, to draft um, events and listings that they can't publish. They can delete their own, but they can't delete others. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's called User role editor. Um, another one is advanced access manager. Um, it's, I, I find it a little easier for the clients to use, but, um, but we're using it with community colleges a lot now. Yeah. So you could, it'll give you every option. Advanced Access Manager. If, if all you're doing is trying to manage access, I would hesitate to use a member plugin because it has a lot of extra functionality you don't need that can kind of blow your site. So you could do it, but you're probably going to slow down your site with functionality you're not using. Yeah, and, and to that point, by the way, what we're doing now, this is how to find out about plugins talk to people, you know, put stuff out there and just ask. I, this is my email address, ask me. Um, and we'll certainly put it out to our team, you know, as well and be in touch. But, um, but it's, it's a really good point because as you are determining what plugin you need, as you are designing your website, as you are whatever, always go back to why. What is it that you're trying to accomplish? Distill it down to the simplest possible level. And then that will help you choose a plugin because you can end up, I'm dating myself, my first VCR <laughs> did 50,000 things and all I needed it to do was play a video and I couldn't figure out how to do it. <laughs> so, there, so it's very tempting to get, um, to get a plugin that is incredibly full featured and incredibly powerful, but you have to dig through to find out how it does that one thing that you really need. My 91 year old mother has a smartphone for the first time. She calls it a flat phone, which I love. We now refer to ours as flat phones. Um, but she can do everything except make a call. So, so it's those kinds of things that when you're searching for a plugin, if what you really need is this access, then find the simplest possible way to accomplish that thing. Anybody else? You had a, did you have a question, ma'am? Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it depends on what. So, if for for email newsletters. We like MailChimp. Um, Constant Contact is another is another uh, wonderful option. Um, again, our whole brand is fun, friendly, easy, demystify, and we like the chimp. You know, I mean, he's just the MailChimp's um, approach is very user friendly. Constant Contact is a little more technical, I think. So it just matters. It depends on how your brain works. But yeah, and then MailChimp, there's a plugin. Um, that will put that subscription form on your site. The yeah, one thing with those services is that they're all worried about getting marked as spammers. And so if a certain number of people flag you as spam to them, then they cut you off. Yeah. My sense of constant contact, because I, I used to live in Boston and I knew people there, is their threshold for cutting you off was very, you could get cut off just with like one. Really easily, contact. yeah. I would, I would not use constant contact. Yeah, and I think they're all working on, on writing that line. And looking forward as your business grows, if you get to the point where you need more functionality than MailChimp and um, constant, constant content, or eye contact is actually local and more right. local. Yeah, local. Uh, but if you need more functionality than they offer in terms of branching and putting people through funnels, uh, look at Active Campaign. Yeah. I recently, I was MailChimp for years and loved them, and I got to this point where I wanted to start tracking um, how people were maneuvering through. Um, and so Active Campaign allows you to create a drag and drop branching scenario. So you can say, um, send them this email, and if they click a link, send this link.
link send them over here, and if they click this other link send them over here, it just seemed to make very sophisticated. I would recommend not going there though until you're pretty successful with what you're doing and you just need to get, and you want to get a little more sophisticated. But um, for the price, um, Active Campaign is really good for that. Yeah, absolutely. Start small, keep it simple, master the basics, and then you can start you know, looking at the other stuff because it's really easy with some of these plugins to get WooCommerce is one that'll just like your head will come off. So, so as a result, you never end up selling anything on your store. Like you have it, but you still take phone calls because you're scared. So, but documentation, good, right? It's back to that support thing that we were talking about. So, um, yeah. So just don't just start small. Figure out what it is you need to do. Did I did, have I missed talking about a plugin that somebody loves and they're pouting because they think I'm not paying attention to their plugin. Does anybody need a plugin that we haven't? Um, back up. Well, just, oh, we'll, we'll leave the one because I've used a couple of them and I'm just back WP. Yeah, back WP up is a good one. WP backup is a good one. Um, backup buddy. Yeah. Backup buddy's awesome because I think it's a WordPress. I think it's a, a automatic product. Yeah, we're kind of fanatical about, you know, the, we follow the old, if it doesn't exist in three places, it doesn't exist thing. Um, make sure you have a host that is backing up. Make sure you have, you know, you know how to access that backup, you know, all of this stuff. But yeah, backing up is kind of a big deal. Well, for your content, you should have that stored locally on your computer. Ideally. And, and then, well, I mean, you're, you're nuts to, to not have it on your computer. Right. I mean, just like, why are you going to trust a hosting company? I mean, like, yeah, you got it. Good. You have a good host. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Is there a plugin that allows one to see Google Sheets, like an Excel sheet, as a database? I'm wanting to, so I'm not like trying to keep up with constant translation. I wanted to um, have one in the Google Excel sheet so that like, I can pull the information into the sheet dynamically, but then allow the user to download. Probably, probably. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's really good. that's a good question. You know, there. I mean, I know there are there are plugins that will let you certainly embed Google Sheets into your website, and it's not the same. So it sounds like what you're you need it to parse this data and bring it in and do stuff. That's probably we're probably into developer territory there. Um, It, it blows to bits. I don't know. That's, I don't know. Let's, we can talk about that, or you and Alex can talk about that or something. Custom. Uh, Alex is our developer, and he's just like, why don't we just build it custom? And I'm like, oh, because it's WordPress. <laughs> no, we, we, we do a combination of both, certainly, and there are, and there are always situations where, you know, you, you, may have to, you may have to use some kind of hybrid approach, but. Anybody else? I think we're out of time. Thank you so much.